Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to another BlazeCast presentation. I'm bringing you a game between Dare and Complexity Gaming. And uh, this is one of the best of three games starting off the uh, knockout rounds of the Defense 2. So we're bringing you this game. Uh, I got Dare, uh, the primarily Ukrainian team. They uh, actually have most of their members from DTS, uh, built by Art, Art Style there as a captain. And then uh, Complexity Gaming, obviously from the North American setup. So they have uh, a lot from United States and from Canada as well. I'm going to start off with Complexity Gaming getting the dire side pickup and also first ban and first pick. So um, uh, along those lines, I've seen complex both teams play very uh, aggressively overall. Um, in, earlier in this tournament in the group stages what you're looking at is Dare's got a really really aggressive early game style pretty much if they can do a lot of damage to your towers or at least to the hero kill list really really early on then they're gonna have, thrive in, the, in going into the middle game if there is even a middle game um, whereas Complexity more is kind of a standard American style of try to win the lanes try to win the team fights and uh, they might have a more dynamic thing where they go do a little bit of 4 protect 1 action with their tri lane, but overall they're always thinking of um, emphasis on team fight and uh, going from there. Um, so they do start off with this Lashrak ban and Lycan ban, pretty standard for um, trying to knock out some hard pushers. Um, DTS, especially, uh, sorry, Dare, uh, definitely looking at uh, pickups like that, trying to go for some really early pressure on towers and things along those lines. But, um, the complexity definitely has played against them multiple times before. They kind of know their style and kind of know what to look out for, so I'm sure they're keeping that in mind while they're drafting, and especially with their banning pickups. Um, but yeah, uh, just introducing the team. You got Goblin, Art Style, G, M, and Feed. Um, I'm assuming G is actually God, and M is Magus. Um, and then you got Fluff, J, O, T, C, Hannah Montana, and X Mike 88 on complexity. Um, anyways, Enchantress Band coming out from COL. Don't want them to pick that up for the early neutral camp jungling aspect of it. They're probably going to ban out of Chen also as a follow-up. Um, if they're going to ban the Enchantress, they're going to ban the Chen. It's just kind of pretty standard unless they plan on first picking the Chen, uh, which might be what they're looking at doing. Definitely gives them a lot of lane control. Gives them potential to do a pseudo tri lane kind of thing where you have two bottom that are really well engineered to kill or farm very effectively and have the Chen to roam and support as needed. Um, the Dark Seer Band does come out from Dare. They're not one to have to worry about uh, his Ion Shell or just anything really that can thwart their early game aspect. Uh, the Surge can prevent early kills. The Ion Shell can uh, kind of disrupt early pushes, that kind of stuff. So overall, that's not one thing that they want to have to face off. But Dare definitely pushing for their early game, early pressure, knock them, uh, hit them hard and fast. Uh, line up there, so we'll see. But Broodmother Ben actually coming out for the uh, uh, Complexity Gaming, they're definitely that definitely conveys that they might be looking for a Chen pickup, and if Dare does not want them to have it, they're actually going to mount the Nature's Prophet. So Chen definitely in the hands of Complexity here, if that's what they choose to go with. Um, but Broodmother is going to be taken off the board, and so that definitely hurts a little bit of uh, Dare's potential early game. I know they really like that Suicide Lane Broodmother, just going to town on one to two heroes there and uh, taking that off the board. They will have to be a little bit more flexible, but that Chen pickup does come out. No counter with the Enchantress, so he doesn't have to worry about the tug of war with the cre neutral creeps. Safe to just cover the jungle, cover it well, and uh, gank uh, very effectively onto presumably top lane. I mean, I have seen counter jungles from the Chen, but most likely the uh, complexity is just going to kind of run a pseudo tri lane with uh, a carry and a support running on the top lane with Chen coming in as he pleases. Um, Curious to see what Dare comes out with a counter pickup. Do you have Invoker still on the board? Enigma, um, not always a pickup you see in the first three because he is pretty easy to counter, but he is also available as well, and he's one that uh, they like to pick up. Like I was saying, so uh, yeah, they actually did do a first pick Enigma. Yeah, like I said, he is pretty easy, effective to counter, but he also just gives him so much more effectiveness in that early game aspect. Uh, the Eidolons microed really well can do a lot of damage, and he can even suicide lane as well as jungle if he really wants to. So um, they have, have laned him in both respects, and uh, I'm not sure exactly, I can't remember who their initiator player is, but uh, they generally play him just for yeah, his uh, combination with Malefice and Eidolons are really effective in the laning phase, just kind of getting that much more experience uh, distributed among their team. And then um, moving into quick team fights, of course, the Black Hole is what he's famous for, and that can 
cause the enemy team a lot of grief as well. And Shadow Demon, another pickup that's just really, really strong in the early stages. Um, high utility hero. I mean, does decently in the middle game. Uh, um, sorry, mid game. Uh, based on the fact that his illusions turn kind of the items of the opponent against him. And also he can disrupt uh, kills really, really effectively. So maybe getting a lot of damage coming on them. He can always use pop the disruption and uh, avoid a lot of potential damage there. But he's definitely going to be used aggressively as well. Um, could go with like a Tide and a Morphling or something like that. If they do decide to even go with a carry. They, Dare a lot of times doesn't bother with carries whatsoever and just goes for that um, aggressive team fight. But if they do want to carry with them, Morphling would be the pickup. But actually Tide, complexity kind of seeing through that, doesn't want to have to worry about a Tide, Shadow Demon set up. So what they're doing is they're just picking up the Tide for themselves. That may be the lane support or he may be drawn as a solo, but one way or another. Um, Tide is going to be their uh, AoE ultimate. They kind of have that coverage there and just kind of gives them that mo much more potential in the mid game. Uh, with that amazing Ravage and the armor reduction from Gush also adding in a lot of auto attack damage from their team there. So they might be building towards a physical damage setup. Um, Chaos Knight still on the board. Not sure if they're wanting to pick that up, but he's really, really good for uh, causing that aggressive uh, damage there, especially with the physical damage. He is a little bit unpredictable, and maybe that's what complexity may want to avoid. Tinker. But they actually go with the Tinker, which is very interesting. Um, he's going to be most likely soloing, I would say, either the top lane or the middle lane, but he could actually do the dual lane with Tidehunter, trying to make sure he's not sapping too much experience, mostly focusing on stacking and pulling, that kind of thing. One way or another, they're going to focus on getting Tinker farmed up, um, so he can always push away the push uh, attempts of the Dare team. Uh, he's going to try to just do is get marching machines up there or even rockets up. If you can harass the heroes or you can ha harass the creeps off one way or another, you're going to be able to keep your towers up longer than Dare intends for them to be. And uh, that's kind of controlling the flow a little bit more, and that's a really good pickup on their part. But Windrunner going to be the last pickup on Dare, and that's just straight up lane presence. Uh, she can be literally wherever she wants to be. She can be a suicide, she can be played as a solo mid, or she can be playing as a lane support. But right now, all you're looking at is just so much potential. For high utility, high damage, and high survivability heroes. Um, I guess you wouldn't consider Enigma the highest of survivability, but just the, the stun and uh, uh, team fight with his black hole and with his uh, summons from Eidolons, he does a lot, a lot of damage output as well. So from all these three heroes, they have a very nice bag of tricks to uh, put a lot of disables and a lot of hurt on the uh, uh, opposing team, and uh, can do a lot of aggression early on. That will just, I mean, if you can land a, even a two, rank two shackle on two heroes in an early team fight, it makes a huge amount of difference there. You can pick off a Tinker really quick or something like that. Um, but we'll see exactly what does come out. They do get the Lone Druid and the Clink Span out. Surprising bans, in my opinion. I didn't, they don't, those two picks don't jump out to me as heroes that you really got to worry about. I'd say Morphling is definitely something that uh, Complexity might be looking at banning. Um, I would also say, um, I don't know, honestly, I don't know who Dare would ban out, but they just don't want to deal with the Lone Druid. Um, although it's not the most common pickup, he can be very, um, disruptive if he does get to jump around and do whatever the heck he wants. Another, um, Intellect Hero ban from Complexity, they're looking at banning out Invoker there. Um, there are already three Intellect Heroes on Dare, um, obviously, so... Invoker might be adding, even if they picked up Invoker, their team setup might be a little bit squishy. Um, just low strength, low health overall. But it will benefit them in the sense that they don't have to deal with the spell spamminess of that Invoker and uh, have to worry about the fact that they have a pretty good uh, mid game going with the fact that Invoker benefits so much from experience. But that Chaos Knight pickup, very powerful, but uh, Dare's going to take that off the board and make sure that uh, Tinker's going to be probably the only carry they're going to be looking at for this game. Which is fine, because Tinker can do a lot in of himself and with those items, and Crystal Mains is going to be the lane support set up for Tinker. So I'm not sure if uh, they're going to have a dual lane mid covering the Tinker, or they're going to be sending the Tinker top for a um, uh, tri lane there. But uh, they're not going to leave him high and dry. They're definitely not going to send him to the suicide, so I'm curious. They're probably looking at a suicide hero for complexity gaming. Maybe a Marana, maybe a... Uh, I don't know, Beastmaster. Beastmaster would be a really good pickup for their setup there. Doesn't give that much extra b the damage to Tinker, really. The aura doesn't. But overall, just his disables and things along those lines, uh, I think Beastmaster would be a really, really nice pickup for uh, complexity. So we'll see if they do end up picking that up. 
but uh, Admiral, Kunkka here. Admiral Kunkka coming out. Nice uh, laning setup here. We've got the Kunkka Shadow Demon lane. Pretty much what that does is just have this huge amount of harass. Combining the 2.5 second delay disruption, it's a predictable dis a delay, with um, the 1.7 second delay on the um, torrent. Puts those both down on that one person. He flies up, possibly gets a soul catcher, which is uh, Shadow Demon's W on him to take bonus damage and take damage from those illusions and it's just a, a huge pain train of damage that so doesn't really cost their lane too much mana too much uh potential there so they can do that very frequently and they can even kill people that are as far back as on their tower without batting an eyelash so that's a very effective combo and they're going to be laying that very aggressively uh, perhaps against this tinker here and he if uh they do pick up the tinker put him in a lane against these two he's going to have a bad time that's for sure. But they do pick up the tiny. So that's I was talking about a kind of a strength hero that has a good disable but also good burst. And uh tiny definitely fills that role. Kind of fills in that nicely and he can do a lot with that. Um haven't seen tiny picked up this entire tournament. Definitely not something that sees high meta or anything. His Magnum Scepter can give him a lot of push for like hitting down tier threes really quickly. And Rex to follow that up. But overall he's just he has just I haven't seen him too much. He's very mana reliant. He has to worry about that very frequently. He can do one combo um, early on, and then he's pretty much out of mana until he gets some kind of restoration, like a bottle or something. Um, but he generally covers his solo lane, tries to get that experience advantage up. I'm really um, not sure how they're going to lane this, because they do have to have send somebody either to the suicide lane, or they're going to have to do an aggressive try lane. Because uh, these so many heroes here, they, have to, they don't really have the set up to just not let any of them solo. Um, but Quap is going to be the last pickup. She's definitely going to be going middle for Darer. She's going to be controlling the middle lane there. And then you're going to see Shadow Demon and Kunkka um, most likely laning on bottom lane with Enigma in the jungle and Windrunner on top lane. That's what I'm predicting for Darer. As far as complexity goes, uh, they can go any number of ways, but uh, they're going to have to be careful how they lane their, uh, lane their picks. I'm going to assume that Tinker's either going middle or top. Not going to make him forced to fight against that combo there um and then you could probably see yeah tinker top tiny mid um tied solo bottom not entirely sure but we'll see we'll see what they end up doing with it i think um however that the bottom lane for complexity is going to be their weak point and uh if Derek can put um knock through that chink in their armor then they can really start giving them a rough time we'll see exactly what how it goes up but uh jumping into the game here i'll check out items and who's playing what actually pause does start off really quickly, but uh, you can see Shadow Demon's picked up by Goblin, Qua art style, amazing on that Queen of Pain, just going to be wreaking havoc with those screams, um, and mobility with the blink there. Uh, G and M, oh god, and Magus going to be picking up the Kunko Windrunner, and Feed, I'm not familiar with him as a player, but uh, he's going to be picking up the Enigma. You got Fluff uh, on Chen, definitely going to be, actually got tiny looking at the top lane with a stout shield with J.O. going towards the middle lane so we'll be seeing what they intend to do with that smoke already picked up awesome shark head on the tide hunter having a fun time with that love those cosmetic items the frog as well courier and uh, just looking at this these cool aspects they got the banners all set up and everything like that so they got their sponsored sponsors included on there they got their symbols and everything set up so it's really a nice thing to see you got dare just got their big big letters there um, Razor as their sponsor, but um, overall, I just I love uh, once they get this set up there. It's not just like radiant and dire territory. It's really you you kind of control your own zone and control your own field there. But it looks like they're gonna be laning it up so that uh, Tiny is gonna be building lots of farm. Crystal Maiden supporting him top. Chen currently looking at bottom lane. Not exactly. I guess he might be looking to Holy Persuasion to creep back to base, causing a kind of a denial of a push. But we'll see if he does that trick or not, or if he's going to be doing it for middle lane. Uh, but one way or another, they're shaping up to give J.O. a lot of coverage in the middle lane with Chen and possibly Crystal Maiden even roaming. Uh, but setting up Hannah Montana Tide on bottom, he's going to be going up against Art Style Solo with uh, Enigma in the jungle. And then they're going to be sending Kunkka and Shadow Demon towards mid and Windrunner, of course, on the top lane. So they did switch up the lanes a little bit um, from what I was predicting. I thought that Quap would go mid and these two would go bottom, but um, really they wanted to shut down this tanker, and this tanker was set for the middle lane. So 
unfortunately for Tinker, he's going to have, right off the bat, going to have a little bit of a rough time with this disruption touring combo, and that's not going to be exactly what he wants to see there, so. But, uh, right off the bat. So, they do have two junglers. They have the, we have the Chen jungler and the Enigma jungler, but this combo already starting off, but he does move forward. He does know exactly how to uh, go up against it. He does take a lot of damage here, a number of hits from not only the illusions, but the uh, two opposing, the two opponents there. Not sure what the frog warrior was already bringing up to Tiny or Crystal Maiden, but they are already mobilizing him, using him for what he's worth and getting those items out of him. But uh, honestly, if uh, G had been a little bit quicker on the torrent, it should have been. It's pretty much an automatic free torrent if they do the timing of it correctly. So they have to be uh, appropriate about that. But uh, Tidehunter starting with the Anchor Smash going up against AA, or sorry, R Style. Uh, but they are already diving past the tower. Again, with a torrent delay, he, if he does it appropriately, he shouldn't have any issue with that, but he has got the rank 1 soul catcher on him, 20% increased damage received, and with enough auto, auto attack damage on Tinker, he could have dropped down. But like I said, he's missed both torrents. Um, J.O. being very, very smart about the positioning, knowing exactly where that torrent is, and just kind of making sure he doesn't have to worry about that. But uh, overall, if it's kind of a little bit of a misstep on G's part, not getting that torrent off pretty much immediately when the Soul Catcher ends, or Disruption ends. Um, Chen just kind of making sure there's coverage. Got a good uh, ward set up from uh, the Radiant here. Okay, gives a lot of coverage onto the Cliff Face as well as covering the top rune. Uh, rune did spawn top and his invisibility. I'm not sure if uh, Goblin's going to be covering those or what they're going to be looking for. But uh, Windrunner kind of just be happy to set up shop here. A lot of pulling going on back and forth, actually. These uh, uh, radiant creeps got pulled across, so that's going to be some experience denial for the tiny and for the uh, crystal maiden. Uh, Tinker is actually covering his own runes, and so he's going to be getting the invis there and just kind of he'll be happy to just sit in this uh, zone here and get as much experience as he wants. He will get a little bit of splash damage from the Tidebringer passive, but overall he's getting enough, um, and he does get a free deny out of that. Meanwhile, Tide Hunter really. Uh, Played by Hannah Montana, has to watch himself. Uh, our style has uh, rank two Shadow Strike, going to be maxing that first, or at least bringing it to rank three first. Um, just being getting the benefit of uh, being able to slow a very substantial amount, starting off at thirty percent, and he's already got his ring of health, so he can do as much harass as he wants in this Tide Hunter with absolutely no fear of direct repercussions, even from creep damage. It just it hurts him so much to uh, have to go. Uh, it hurts him so little because of that passive regeneration is up to five point eight regeneration without tangos or anything. And that's really nice for him there. Uh, Wild can war chief. This is Chen. Um, microing this uh, little... Actually, it's not the, it's not the name of it. It's uh, Seder. But anyways, uh, it's using the mana burn. A little bit bug there. But he's using the mana burn onto uh, Kunkka, making sure that he can't torrent effectively. He does have a bottle, so he will be able to do torrent here. But I did miss a first blood them diving up on the top lane, covering this Windrunner. She only had r rank 1... Uh, Wind run, and so they were actually being able to be aggressive enough, use the avalanche, use the toss, and use the rank 2 frostbite to pick her off there. But it did cost them a lot of HP, and they're going to have to be very careful. Um, probably get some regeneration ferried back up to them from the courier here. And yep, he's getting his bottle, so he's getting that, Tiny's getting that coverage. And uh, that gives him a bit of an advantage on the top lane, not only give him first blood to Tiny, which is a very nice way to start off him uh, his movement towards the blink dagger. Um, or arcane boots, one way or another. But uh, it also pulls Windrunner off of her solo streak. The fact that Tiny's level five and Winner's only level four shows that he's not only got that nice kill advantage, where Crystal Maiden's uh, denying a lot of experience, and uh, zo they're zoning her pretty hard in that sense. So that's pretty effective. Tinker building up though. He's only got rank one rocket, so I'm not sure why he's using his mana on that. But uh, just kind of doing a little bit. Of, maybe he was taking off regen. I don't know. But one way or another, he did. Uh, he does have rank three Marshall machines, and he's prepared to stop any Eidolon pushes or whatever comes out. But right now, um, Clarity actually falling off of Terror Feed, so not exactly what he wants either. But Tidehunter getting enough experience. He's not doing as well as Quap. Um, Quap has her rank three Scream. She's level six now, and Tidehunter is missing his Ravage. Um, but he does have enough sustained regen with just uh, this uh, bottle. And he will be able to stay here and get his Ravage. And whether or not he uses that on a different lane, porting top or something, or not, we'll have to figure out. But Tinker does pick up his boots, and he's going to be looking for travels as soon as possible. Um, pretty much as far as last hits and dies go, uh, ignoring the jungle, you're looking at uh, 29 or 30 CS on the Queen of Pain, covering bottom lane extremely well against this Tide Hunter. He's only got 10. 
Um, and then uh, 27 Enigma trying to go to Malthus. Rank, it'll be two two stun procs on the Malthus, and he's really slow now. He was trying to get some gust damage, but Darafeed already popping off the black hole, making using the soul ring and making sure that he gets that they get that kill on Tide Hunter. Surprising, really, because he didn't. Tide really didn't have any support, and he was already slowed. But uh, there wasn't much more damage that Queen of Pain could have brought out. So I guess uh, they just wanted to make sure that kill was secured. Um, they wasn't going to bottle up between dot ticks and get enough HP to survive through that. So he's going to be maybe looking to TP. Now just walking straight up to the lane there. And uh, that'll give uh, Quap a decent bit of breathing room, art style. Picking up his ultimate, probably next level. So I did rank 2, Shadow Strike, rank 4, Scream, and now he's going to be going for his ulti. Um, but overall, nice pressure on their lane. And now uh, Enigma covering the runes very effectively, get, making sure that haste goes to the sha the uh, Kunkka, who has his bottle up and ready for that. Um, but yeah, just scream damage, nice couple CS, and a nice amount of harass on Hannah Montana. It's exactly what uh, Art Style is known for, is just doing really good aggressive AoE, um, pushing, uh, CSing, and harassing at the same time um, can be really really effective and with this wild in here they're going to be looking for top lane they actually got a buckler already buckler headdress chen been farming like a boss uh saw only 28 last hits but of course he's going for the big jungle creeps and so he's benefiting from those substantially he almost has his mech already and with this wild can pushing and doing harassment damage on this w forcing this windrunner back they're going to be able to uh most likely attempt to take up uh the Radiant Tower here. Um, the Centaur will be able to tank a lot of auto attacks, and especially with this Buckler, which gives plus two armor, and it's just able to do tank that many more auto attacks, and now they have absolutely nothing that can stop it. And they're just going to be able to push through and take this top tier one tower. And uh, so, nice. And Chen starts that off, and Tiny gets the kill with his Taunt or auto, whatever. Um, he's doing really well, level seven, and uh, you can see just from that tower kill that they got a nice gold, a clip of gold advantage in their favor. Plantoed out for a bit, but once this tower kill registers, a nice uh, action going on from Goblin, doing the full torrent combo activated with Soul Catcher. Uh, nice ultimate from Chen is actually going to keep him alive. But uh, overall, he was uh, pressured really well by Goblin, and uh, that did give Kunkka an opportunity to force him back. Now he's low on mana, and he pretty much needs to get the bottom rune here. I don't know if he has a bottle coming towards him, but he does not get bottom rune. Yeah, empty bottle. Was looking to uh, fill it up. I believe that's Tide's bottle. But one way or another, he was looking to fill it up, but it's not going to be in it. It's going to be unlucky there. 50-50 chance. Co cover the bottom rune, but uh, it's going to go double damage to Kunkka. And now uh, Quap was able to push down with the harass she's been doing to Tide. He's afraid to get anywhere near her, especially with an empty bottle. And uh, with this rank 2 Malefice able to get a couple uh, stuns on and that's where Art Style with his arcane boots now they're doing a lot of damage pressure to him uh, with the uh, shadow strike and the scream no tower aggro because it's just spells but he's able to do a lot of pressure now she has to watch herself uh, does not have blink up for another few seconds but that perseverance is going to get him healed right back up and that's going to force tidehunter back he actually doesn't even have enough mana for a ravage for a good amount of time and that's going to hurt him as far as defending this lane. These Eidolons going to split, go to six Eidolons, and with that they're going to be able to do a lot of damage to this tower here. Um, but, and middle lane getting a similar f benefit with this double damage here. The Fortify blown already um, on the tier one bottom tower, and now they're just doing so much pressure to both these towers simultaneously. Uh, it technically backdoor protection is active on this. They were trying to get the Eidolons in there early, get them to do extra damage, but uh, really... They weren't able to do much with it because of backdoor protection. However, they're going to finish off this uh, middle lane, but Tinker getting some rocket damage out, and uh, with a frostbite, uh, Derek G is going to go down. Kunkka drops, and uh, Chow Dame has no choice but to retreat here. So really nice coverage. Centaur's coming in along with that frostbite TP, making sure that no matter what, he wasn't going anywhere fast. But a lot of pressure still going on this uh, tower. They're going to try to get the last hit on it. But with the Ravage, if they're going to be able to deny it, maybe nope. Queen of Pain does get the last of it, and is able to blink out immediately after. It did cost them an Enigma, but that's a small price to pay for getting that last hit on that tower, rather than it being denied. So, um, that and Quap just doing extremely well. The only choice for uh, complexity now is just to uh, counter aggression and push down the middle tower. Um, a little bit of harassment from Power Shot, but it shouldn't be enough to stop it. And with the last hit, going to Chen. But a boat and a torrent coming in onto Chen. He does get hit by both of them. Do did pop his ultimate, but with the uh, damage from uh, the Soul Catcher, the Windrun uh, power shot is just going to do so much damage. 
and he was knocked out there pretty quickly. Ravage is no longer available. They did use it to try to deny on the top, but the Malphite stun prevented Tidehunter from denying during his Ravage. And so uh, now they are down a little bit in their team fight and have to be afraid of this black hole. Now Enigma doesn't have BKB. He doesn't have a uh, Blink Dagger or anything like that, but he does have um, enough tank ability to get in there. And once he gets that black hole off, the only heroes that are actually technically able to stop him, with since Ravage is down, are uh, Tiny with his stun and Crystal Man with her frostbite. Um, and that's uh, something that you really got to watch out for. Is uh, obviously not getting caught out and disabled for four seconds at a time. Not what you're looking for this early in the game. Anyways, looking at the gold graph now, a little bit. Uh, Radiant is doing pr uh, pretty swell, getting both those towers on bottom lane. No denial on either, any of those, and getting the mid tier one. Really beneficial from them, but I'd say the EXP graph is going the other way with Dire doing their up by one kill, and uh, overall they're just, uh, they split their lanes really well, and Chen's been doing pretty well of, in of himself. So Chen has the mech, he does have smoke up, and they are looking to do some action on the bottom. Derejee caught out, frostbite on him, and immediately there's nothing he's going to be able to do about it. Tries to pop his wand, but he's got nothing. He's got a quarter staff, so he's going to be looking for a. Uh, Shadow Blade, most likely. I believe that's the uh, appropriate components. But, uh, um, actually, new icons for this patch specifically. Purple. I'm not looking for purple. Yeah, Quarter Staff goes in Shadow Blade. I didn't think it would go into much else. So, uh, uh, Four Staff. N none of those components he's going to be picking up. He's going pick, to pick, be picking up the Shadow Blade and try to go for some burst damage with this Tidebringer and try to get the most out of that that he can. So, um, it isn't really a great escape tool in high tier games because obviously they support. Chen and uh, Nick actually tiny getting caught out here just uh, with no tower to defend him he really was in a bad position and Quap even seeing uh, this uh, Queen of Pain here uh, getting the Shadow Strike and just popping the ultimate nice Chen ultimate he does have his mech available if he's able to get closer to her but uh, Art Style just going to go for the Scream and finish her off so nice play there um, he's going to be looking for a Bloodstone now um, all he needs is the point boost which is only 300 more and blinking away from the Ravage Ravage completely goes wide and wasted from Hannah Montana and with that um, hopes are catching that co-op and shutting her down before the Bloodstone are fading away quickly so he just did really well um, laying on that bottom lane you can see 67 last hits and also two kills and two assists and now they're going to get some damage on the bot on the tower uh, gets a full soul catcher onto tide and with just enough burst damage with that chen ultimate but chen gets pulled out and with this bow coming in from the damage there uh the debuff uh, keeps them from dying to the burst damage from tinker too quickly uh, tiny come in trying to do some damage here too but uh he does not have his q available just yet trying to bring down the uh shadow demon and a quap needs to blink out here now he only has two blinks left and he needs to use it, that opportunity right now. Might be a little bit tempted by this low HP Centaur, but he just needs to get out of dodge there. So um, overall, they were not able to take a tower, so I would say that dive was a little bit too uh, aggressive for Dare, especially the fact that they did use uh, Black Hole and they were only able to kill Chen out of it. They did, did pick off uh, Tidehunter really quickly. Uh, the Holy Persuasion almost called him back and that would have been amazingly beneficial for complexity but they were able to with the soul catcher bonus uh, burst him down fast enough however uh, they did get three heroes from Darer for the price of two and uh, also with the loss of black hole so they did overall protect their tower and were able to win that team fight in my mind uh, however they have to be afraid of this uh, queen of pain she uh, disassembled her arcane boots got the bloodstone and now she's going to be looking for maybe phase boots or treads. Probably treads. That's what I see the most time. Interesting ward placement here. Definitely not something that you're going to sentry, but it does give a lot of vision to the, the river and a uh, good portion of uh, top lane. So they can see when the push is oncoming, they can TP accordingly. Boots of Travel did, uh, speaking of teleports and town portals, uh, you're looking at uh, Tinker's boots finishing up. BOT is extremely important on him because he does get the rearm is able to reset the cooldown on his booth travels and that makes gives him so much mobility he hopped back to base um, mana up bottle up non-stop and uh, then uh, jump back out to whatever lane he feels like pushing him back so he can uh, drop a martial machines or two and then uh, teleport back to base mana up and just continuously do that pushing out all the lanes getting a lot of farm and that just opens up much more new windows he has to be very aware map aware in order to do this make sure that he's not about to teleport right next to three and three or four enemy heroes about to ruin his day but uh overall if if played correctly 
he can cover his uh, lanes and also provide a lot of pressure in every single direction. Now, ultimate from Queen of Pain, only rank one ultimate. Surprise! I'm actually find it interesting that he chose to rank the blink up over the uh, Sonic Wave, but as long as he gets a little bit more experience, hit the level 12, and now he has a rank 2 Sonic Wave available. Tinker flying in, and uh, they're going to have to fall back here. They know they have Ravage up and enough stun damage, nuke damage from the drums tiny. Um, but the uh, March of Machines also really hurts. So uh, they're just waiting, biding their time until Tinker comes back out with his next creep wave. They're going to try to poke a little bit harder on this tower here. But uh, Nigma, oh nice, tiny toss into the Tide Hunter ultimate. Ravage going across, disruption protecting the Kunkka. Uh, Quap trying to do a lot of damage, but that ultimate, although it hit almost everybody, uh, Chen ulti. Uh, now the boat coming through, killing the Chen and bringing the tiny low, but uh, Kunkka's got nothing else for him, and he's going to drop down. Uh, finished off Windrunner, finished off the Crystal Maiden, but losing your Kunkka for Crystal Maiden is not really the aggression play you need, and uh, they're not going to get much more out of it. They even, with all these neutrals, might even be looking for the push still, but this power shot should finish off a lot. Was able to not pick off any of the big creeps, but was just able to scare off as much as he needed. A nice block in from the skeleton. A little bit micro there, and he's going to be trying to get a kill on these guys here. And with that power shot, he is going to kill the centaur. Not the biggest deal in the world, he can always get more, but uh, hurting him, and uh, it might be give art style the opening he needs to just start screaming like crazy on the this opponent here. Um, Tidehunter's Ravage is down. His tier 1 tower is low. But Crystal Maiden coming back in with her 4-4 skill setup. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, the screen was nice, but the Chen ultimate special, uh, was able to counteract most of the damage. You're looking at 200 damage from healed versus the uh, 475 damage done. That's m mitigated by 20, at least 25% based on magic armor. Um, interesting play there with the Midnight Pulse opening up, uh, get, providing a bit of an opening here with the uh, breaking down the trees. If he was able to get in without any of these stunners catching him out, he could have actually gotten a really nice black hole off, but knew that his teammates weren't close enough to benefit from that. And so all they're going to be doing is walking all over this creative warding done by uh, Crystal Maiden. So, um... Honestly, I'm kind of surprised Jo's not covering the other lanes. He could be doing a lot of damage to this tier 1 bottom tower, but they just want to make sure that they're safe and cozy up on this low HP tier 1 top. Um, but smoke does come up. They're going to be looking for some quick aggression. Jo actually needs to get right back into it if he's going to be able to uh, apply pressure here, but Windrunner is the one. Everybody's transitioned to middle lane, but Windrunner is still uh, all by herself, and with that uh, an attempt at a smoke phase... Uh, Avalanche onto the Windrunner, but uh, may just not have any of that. Getting the Windrun off and a four staff, making sure he's well covered there. And try to power shot down the creep wave as much as possible, make sure this push is delayed while his teammates uh, start to regroup towards defending this line here. Chen Ultimate, make sure the neutrals are at full health here, and uh, they're going to be looking to bring down the tower here real quick. A little bit of damage onto J.O., but he's going to be doing alright, and with that last hit from Tiny, bringing down the tower nice amount of gold for them. And they might be looking for maybe Roshan or something like that immediately after whether they can get a uh, ogre, Ice Ogre or not. It doesn't look like they have any camps for Ice Ogres, but uh, um, they can still just kind of go in there and with the uh, durability of the ten Chen Creeps be able to do a lot of damage to that. Now, um, kind of curious what uh, oh, he's going for Agonim Scepter. No, that's obvious. Yeah, Ogre Club and Blades of Lacrim. Like Sandra and Yasha on the tiny. No. No, he's going for his Agonim Scepter. Getting his tree up, getting that splash damage and providing a lot of pressure there. A bit of burst, huge amount of burst damage onto Jo. He was able to dodge the boat, but overall um, he did a nice Shadow Blade burst onto uh, uh, the Tinker with his Tidebringer and uh, got the Torrent on him from long range. Yeah, the ghost ship missed, but just the amount of damage that this Shadow Blade was able to give him was enabled him to burst him down really hard, really fast. So, um, Tiny getting a little bit uh, aggressive here with the creeps, just doing a quick uh, combo on the waves, but now he might be caught out. Got a rank 4 Malthus stun, going to get stunned three times over, and with the amount of Soul Catcher damage and purge, he's going nowhere, and he has dropped down. Nigma getting the last hit. So. Kind of a misstep. He really, really wanted that farm to try to build up more than just the uh, Aghanim Scepter, more more components of it, and uh, it did cost him his life there. Getting a little bit, you know, overset there. Medallion on to Chen, doing more and more physical damage as best he can, and an AFK Tide Hunter not doing so well against these neutrals. Anywho, um, uh, Jo is farming up well. Um, he's going to be maybe opting for a sheep stick next or something along those lines. He does have his bottle and still ring, covering pretty much unlimited mana. 
uh, just has to jump back to the fountain every once in a while, but overall, doing really well. The best part about the soul ring is he, it refreshes with the rearm. Basically, I'll talk about that in a second, but we got a lot of damage coming on Shadow Demon with the rockets and the damage from Chen's W. Hey, Tessa Face going on the high end of things, and an urn charge is going to be healing him up. He just needs a little bit more damage for that rocket. Going long range, but actually hitting the Windrunner instead. Gush going on her, and she's going to have to Windrun out. I uh, just need a little bit more damage on her. Need a re good rearm from Tinker, but he only has rank 1. Um, now, the reason he currently has rank 1 is he's kind of in farm mode right now. A uh, bit of damage on... I guess that was a misclick on Fortify. Oh no, top top tower is still up. I completely forgot about that. I thought they had not defended it. Going for the deny. Nice done. Nice deny from Tiny. So he got the avalanche off and was able to use that opportunity, small window of time, to deny the tower and deny half the gold that uh, uh, Dare would have gotten from that. But uh, what I was saying about the tanker and his rearm for like the third time over is he has rank one rearm right now. He's in farm mode. What it does is it costs only 150 mana, and his soul ring gives him 150 mana for 150 HP, and it refreshes every time that he uses his ultimate. So pretty much what it, getting the soul ring uh, accomplishes is nullifying the cost of that uh, rank one ultimate, and allows him to jump around, farm very effectively. This March Machines does work on the ancients here, and that um, is able. To enables him to do just a lot more damage to these uh, neutrals really quickly and uh, get that farm up. So you can see, jumping back over to K uh, uh, last hits, uh, he's only at 74 now. I expect him in the next 20 minutes to gain uh, well over, like, I'd say triple that pretty easily because he can just uh, jump up and farm that rapidly if he's uh, being mobile with it. And so they've been fairly concentrated with uh, making sure that they are pushing as a team and putting that pressure against error making sure they don't have the early game and now the fact that it's pushed in 22 minutes already shows that they've covered it pretty well and getting these aggressive sentries up making sure that there's not too much wardage here and art style walking right over it so they know exactly where he's at and uh... if they're going to be choosing to counter gank him they might be looking to um... but uh... tinker was porting up top now he still is um, but uh, Art Style may be looking for a, an attempt to kill on Tinker. A lot of damage. He did pop Soul Ring, so he's down to half health now. And with a Scream coming out, he's going to drop down. So uh, she did walk over the Sentry, but that little blip on the minimap might have not uh, registered. I mean, he would have seen it, but maybe he wasn't paying enough attention. And just that quick little burst from Art Style, getting a nice solo kill on the Tinker. And that's going to be hurting his farm quite a bit. And now a lot of damage coming on Chen. He does have the Soul Catcher and the Ultimate coming in from Shadow Demon, and it's going to drop him down really quickly along with that boat from behind using the Shadow Blade. Now Crystal Maiden is nowhere to go. She's going to chill out and uh, get dropped down as well. Now this uh, Roshan is taken down to two-thirds HP, and uh, they're going to be looking to take it down. So uh, I guess Windrunner is going to take it first with Windrunner. Actually, she only has rank one Windrun at the moment. But uh, overall, just doing a lot of pressure there and probably looking to give the uh, Aegis to either Queen of Pain or Kunkka there. Kunkka doing a lot of damage, looking at over 160. And, uh, but, uh, looks like they're looking to go on it, maybe tossing in the, uh, Tide, nope, too late. They got the Aegis, they're gonna be jumping out, they got the Smoke mobility, and, uh, yeah. I love that combo with the Tiny Toss into the Ravage, it's very effective and makes sure that he doesn't have to buy a Blink Dagger, instead he's opting for Pipe, which is great stuff, um, but, uh, he just wasn't gonna help in that situation. They got two heroes picked off, and they were able to finish, uh, Roshan before they, uh, regrouped. So you can kind of see the gold difference there. Looking at Radiant with the towers they've picked up with the Roshan kill. Um, they're definitely moving the way they want to be. They're getting a lot of gold out of that and flying high in the experience department. It's only 15 to 13 but you just think about where everybody's been on the map and uh, splitting experience really nicely. Overall they've just been playing that really well. Whereas uh, Complexity kind of have been forced to uh, group up a lot and play it really close to the chest making sure their towers are covered, etc, etc. Um, and that's cost them an experience. Uh, Tiny did finish his Agnum Scepter, so although he doesn't have Blink Initiation, got a Hannah Montana out tied under Ultimate coming off. Ravage hitting three, but now Enigma free to go. Avalanche, no BKB, can, no Ravage is going to take him off. So he got a full Black Hole Ultimate, just dropping him down. Now Chen's down, no Ultimate from him, and Tidehunter's going to get hit by the Torrent, and a boat immediately after bringing him down. So really nice from Kunkka, screaming out Kunkka, because that is just... Com that combo wrecking his HP bar, and he's got nothing else he can do out of it. Art style getting really deep on this tiny. Um, uh, yeah, tiny came in. He was ready to avalanche his enigma, but unfortunately, I didn't even catch that feed that already bar uh, finished up his BKB. And with that, there's literally nothing that complexity can do to stop the black hole. He caught three out, 
and that in, in that timing window, he was they were able to do so much damage even without a Queen oh, of Pain ultimate. Thanks. And uh, from that, they were easily able to win that team fight handily. And uh, with the combo of Torrent and Go uh, Ghost Ship on that same location, dropping down another a couple of, of other really important heroes and picking off that Chen really quickly. I know he didn't get his ultimate off, and he probably didn't even get his mech off just with the disables that came out from them. So really well played. Nice team fight by uh, Dara, and they're just going to make sure the JL is pushed off the uh, sideline there. So, and Aegis is still on the Queen of Pain, so she has not only a rank 6 Bloodstone and a BKB for high aggression potential with that rank 3 ultimate, but also has the Aegis available, art style, playing as aggressive as he wants to be, and loving it every minute of it. So. Um, really nice there, and Jo's farm is just not up to par as it needs to be. I mean, the four staff is great with the boots of travel, but I mean, 26 minutes—that's uh, just really delayed. I know he's up against a pretty tough lane with that Kunk of Shadow Demon, but that's not where you want your tanker to be at 26 minutes, and uh, it's going to make it much more difficult for them to transition into the late game. Um, do have pipe? Nope, not even near close at the moment, but uh, they're looking for it when they get the opportunity to do so. In the meantime, Kunkka beefing up, getting some kills out of last, that last fight. He finishes BKB, his Shadow Blade, so he's able to just do so much AoE splash damage. Uh, BKB giving the passive stats of strength and damage, exactly what he likes to hear. And, uh, of course, giving the iconic magic immunity that'll keep him alive through the fights against this tiny uh, tied combo. Queen of Pain getting a little bit aggressive, does not might not know that where the enemy is right here, but Tinker coming in on the Chen creep, and if Art Style is not careful, I guess he is not having to worry about it with that BKB, but wow, just a lot of potential damage can come from him. So since he disassembled the Arcane Boots, I just noticed he did not actually upgrade his boots. He's been running on rank 1 boots since then, so 355 MS, um, meaning that even if he does get a nice blink off, although it's a really good range and cooldown, uh, it's still... He has to walk at some point, and uh, with that, it can be very frustrating, if, especially if the enemy team gets like an orchid or something. It can definitely cause a lot of problems for him. Except for the BKB. BKB component makes him pretty much not have to worry about any of that, which is very effective for him. And now he's working on his agonims. Make his uh, ultimate a 40 second cooldown, and uh, give him that much more potential to use it as many times as he feels necessary. And uh, with, mech, uh, with a Chen nowhere near his agonim scepter, uh, they don't really have a way to counter that other than getting their pipe and trying to bring down the Queen of Pain pretty quickly. But enough, a lot of soul damage coming from Archstyle onto Hannah Montana. He's bringing him down to about two-thirds health just by himself, but he needs to realize that his enemy team is going to get some uh, uh, backup in just a minute. I mean, this is a radiant hero all the way out here in No Man's Land, uh, over by their Tier 2 tower location, but Windrunner kind of helping him out of a bad spot, getting the focus on him. Shackle shot, power shot, and a nice Queen of Pain ultimate coming across. Just a little bit more damage, a few more right clicks. If you can blink on top of him and scream him, that's what he needs to do. And he does get the scream off, bringing off Chen. Now, he does have his Aegis still, but he has just popped his pipe. No longer immune to magic, but also not, oh, he did get just take enough auto attack damage. And so Windrunner is going to drop down, and they're going to try to focus down the Queen of Pain. Does get hit by the Avalanche, does get tossed in the air. We're going to blink out immediately after. Um, and now uh, Chen does get his root, does get his stun, gets the frostbite, and that's going to be the end of Queen of Pain. So like I said, loves to play aggressively, has that BKB, had that Aegis, but 2 versus 5 is not a winning number as far as that kind of uh, back and forth goes. Um, and the Enigma did have a couple opportunities for a big black, bowl, big black hole with his BKB blink. Now that he has a blink dagger, however, he was just not in a position to respond to the retaliation of COL. So a bit of a mistake, dropping the Aegis and losing two kills for two deaths for only the Chen pickoff. But uh, overall, that's not going to cost them their lead. It's still still complexity needs to group it together and do a, quite a bit more to make sure that they get the benefit from that. Queen of Pain ha did have a killing spree, uh, streak that was ended by Tiny. He does have his Hyperstone, his Drum, and his Aghanim Scepter, so he has a lot of auto attack damage. But he kind of has to get set up for it too, because he doesn't have that anything more than a phase boots for mobility. So we'll see exactly what comes out of him. But uh, Tinker, looking for his cheap stake, has 2100 out of that. And uh, he's going to be moving towards Scythe Advice as soon as he can. But a lot of BKBs already picked up on Dare, make, makes that by the minute more ineffective. You're looking at Kunkka having his BKB. Queen of Pain, nice four staff coming out from uh, onto Kunkka. Uh, our, I'm guessing four staff was actually put from the Tinker onto the Tiny. But uh, one way or another, the Shadow Blade was able to make time, make sure that Tiny was uh, well covered there. Um, and Haste Room covered by him. Empty bottle, so happy for that. 
Um, but yeah, what we're looking at here is a big uh, potential for a huge black hole ultimate with this blink of this BKB. Feed already showing that he can notice how to trap a uh, number of heroes very effectively in it and uh, just dodging rockets with his current blink. But uh, then he has a mech to follow up after that, along with the mitigation that's provided by Ghost Ship. It's not something that you generally rely on for a team fight, but when you get it, that much more helpful. So, um, and then Pipe was already finished there as well. So Art Style just kind of doing some back and forth harass. Um, no ages, but he's still able to be pretty aggressive with the BKB. But if Hannah Montana does come out and uh, makes him pop BKB and Pipe, so a lot of already popped off. Enigma does catch off Hannah Montana all by himself, but uh, Black Hole is going to end. Torrent does come off, and he's going to go for a Ravage right here, and he gets it off. He just Kraken Shell pops it off the Disables. Queen of Pain coming in from the ultimate. Ghost Ship following up, and Tiny taking tons of damage. Ghost Soulcatcher on him from a blink from Enigma going to drop him down. Archstyle does not have BKB, needs to watch his health. A lot of damage coming in onto uh, Enigma, but now Tide needs to watch himself. He does have the eye, and if he loses that gem, it's going to cost him a number, good amount of gold. And with that burst from Tide Hunter, it's going to drop him down. Nice blink from Queen of Pain to finish off that Tinker, and he's going to have to buy back. Costs him a lot. Um, there is a uh, buyback mechanism now, but there is no hotkey for it, so I'm just going to jump to it real quick. It did cost him 954 gold there, and uh, yeah, he's going to be none too happy about that for how much he had to spend for that, delaying his sheep stick considerably just because uh, Queen of Pain, Art Style, managing to pick him off with that last scream. And now he's running up to nine bloodstone charges. Um, does have his treads finished. Um, J.O., or sorry, uh, G, getting more and more scary by the minute. 3,000 gold when we build up maybe a Crystallis, Daedalus, or uh, even uh, like a Heart. All of that can be very, very devastating with that uh, the damage that comes out from that Tidebringer. So we'll see exactly what he picks up. But um, with him, them being magic immune, this uh, Scythe of Ice isn't going to be as effective as it needs to be. Three BKBs on Dare's team says that Scythe, although a great pickup, is going to be limited in his options for a majority of the team fight. And uh, the way they're going right now, Dare's just making sure the team fights are as short as possible. And uh, just causing a lot of pro grief for uh, Say Well right now. You can see, still, just as before, a little bit of back and forth, but overall, a demanding lead on uh, uh, Dare versus Complexity here. So it is a best of three. This is their first game here. Um, this is going to be the one I, only one I cast tonight, but tomorrow I plan on casting the remaining game or games of uh, Dare versus Complexity. And uh, we'll see how this uh, matchup comes out. Um, but overall, really nice play by both teams right now. Um, just back and forth. I think uh, Dare has really got their act together for their team fights. I mean, although the Enigma Ultimate, the Black Hole, I know, I know Feed can do a lot more than that, and he should be doing a lot more than that. But overall, uh, their team fights have just been really considerable once they're all five of them together and providing a a lot of pressure against their opponents. They knew once they popped the, that BKB and pipe against the assumed Tidehunter ultimate, they kind of had to go, and so they coordinated well, and despite diving the tower, they're like, screw it, we can take these guys, and they put out a lot of damage there. So, uh, really, really well played. It wasn't it wasn't their team fight until the very end, but once they got those last two kills pretty conveniently, and took out a gem even, uh, they'll be very happy for that. So... Tide does not have a gem anymore. He does have his pipe, which he did pop in the last fight, but uh, really they're relying on this tiny damage a lot. Feed coming out with a blink dagger onto Chen, making sure that he cannot get his mech off at all, if at all possible, and Torrent and Bo uh, Ghost Ship coming in through, and then a Queen of Pain ultimate going somewhere else, doing a lot of damage to somebody, and Crystal Maiden trying to get her ultimate off, trying to get a lot of damage. Tide Hunter Ravage going on nothing. BKB is all around, and uh, that's going to be able to finish him off. So, three heroes down, four heroes down, and Tiny. Although he's got an amazing amount of right-click damage with this uh, uh, attack from his ultimate and the attack speed from all his items, he really isn't going to be able to do much to prevent this on his own. He needs major disables, he needs a powerful Ravage, but the BKBs are up and the disables aren't there. So, unfortunately for them, they have the damage pressure and they're going to be taking racks here. Taking melee racks, taking range racks, and be looking at Roshan. Um, so Tiny's going to do what he can, but overall, he can't risk his life here. He can't risk his life to stop these racks, and he might be right now. He doesn't have a Blink Dagger, and he's just got so much Disable thrown at him just now. With the Soul Catcher, he's gonna, just going to drop down real quick. Crit from uh, Kunkka, 796, plus the 50% uh, increased true damage received from Soul Catcher. So easy damage from Kunkka. Dropping him down, finish him off, and uh, even Chen's ultimate. Showing its, showing its weakness as we progress into la later in the game. I don't want to call this late game because it's only 35 minutes in, but holy crap, 29 to 19. You got a 
level 21 Quab and 19 Kunkka. I mean, it's they're they're moving on to be as devastatingly aggressive as possible. And uh, apparently, uh, I was wrong about the Aghanim Scepter pickup. He actually he picked up the point booster. But what he's going to be actually looking for is a Scotty, a couple ultimate orbs, and an orb of Venom away. He's going to be picking up that Scotty, adding a lot more auto attack damage. Um, nice blink coming out from Art Style, trying to pick off this J.O. He's not going to be able to finish him off with the damage. He does TP out. Does not have any way of stopping that TP at the moment. But uh, overall, just having a lot of damage in his path block and preventing this Tidehunter from getting off the... He doesn't have Ravage, but he's going to try to pipe his teammates. And a nice uh, black hole coming in from Feed. Catching two, catching three now. And Art Style going to follow up on that, try to get some damage from J.O. Going to drop down the tanker. And with that, it's going to be their team fight. That's all their damage right there, effectively. I mean, you got 30 seconds on uh, the Ravage. He's going to get disabled. Malefist stun coming up in three seconds. And uh, with the Shackle, that's the end of Hannah Montana. That's the end, or just about the end of the game. Well played by Dara, just dominating all over that team fight. You can check the KDAs. I mean, they're just doing so well. And Fluff just says, that's it. We know that you have too much. We don't have buybacks. Victory of Sonic Wave from the Queen of Pain as uh, Dara and call, or sorry, Complexity calls GG. So, well played on the part of Dara. 33-19, just really, really took that mid game and made it happen. Good black holes. Really good play by the Queen of Pain. And it just showed... And the uh, amazing damage from Kunkka as well. And ghost ships. You don't see every Kunkka in the world landing those ghost ships as well as him. But he just, he was on the ball with those. And he always caught a number of heroes in them. And also got the buff for his teammates. So, really well farmed, really well played. And uh, good job to Dare. Game one goes to them. And we'll see immediately after the fact. Crit, crit. Anyways, they're all DC'd. But he was looking for some crazy... Ultra kill one shots. Anyways, moving on to the scoreboard. You guys can check that out. Um, this has been a Blaze Cast presentation. I'm obviously Blaze, Blaze Inferno, whatever you want to go with. Um, but my YouTube channel, if you're not already at it, is Blaze Casting. And uh, just check that out. Um, I'm still a really new caster. Not even been in this for two months. And I'm just trying to improve and do whatever I can uh, to move in that direction. And uh, if you guys can uh, give me some constructive criticism as I move towards working towards maybe doing some live casts and stuff like that. I'm trying to find a good co-caster to work with, but we'll see where that leads. In the meantime, just happy to cast off this defense too, and with this game going towards uh, Dara, I'm very excited about the rest of the no uh, knockout uh, games coming up. So, we'll see, but thanks for watching guys, and uh, see you guys in the next one.